Okay, lesson 20. Um, all right. Let's, uh, is there a faster way to do this problem? Is there a faster way to do that? What is the, what is the faster way, Addy? Uh, 5 times 4. Yeah, it's just, you're just, you could add it all together, but this is just 5 times 4. This is the shortcut to addition, right? When you're adding the same thing a multiple number of times, that's called multiplication. All right, what, is there a fast way to do this? Is there a different way to write that? Okay, do you know, Avery? Yeah, it's like a, it's like a five with like a small four. Yes, that, what is that thing called? Uh, a number. Yes, exponent, that's right. So this guy is called the base. This guy is called the exponent. What's the answer to an exponent problem? Which is 625, right? Six, it's not five times four, right? This is five times four when you're adding it five times, four times. But when you're multiplying a five, four times, five times five times five times five, it's 625. Um, do you know what the answer to an uh, exponential problem is called? Do you know, Hunter? I know what it's not called. What is it not called? A reciprocal. Yes, it's not called a reciprocal. Or Larry. It's not called Larry. I know what it's called. Or okay. hot dog. Do you know what it's called? A number. A number. It is a number. You're right. This is called a power. More specifically, the fourth power of five. Okay, this is the fourth power of five is 625. All right, um, so let's go back here a little bit. There is, a, um, we can say five to raised to the fourth power, five raised to the fourth power. No one really says that anymore. Um, so people will kind of shorten that down to like five raised to the fourth, or they'll just say five to the fourth, five to the fourth power. Okay. So when you say, uh, read that five to the fourth is probably the, 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 the least amount of words that you need to say that statement. Okay. Five to the fourth. All right. Meaning five raised to the fourth power, yes. Yep. Okay, now there are some other, if we're raising something to the second power, how do we say that? There's another special way to say that. Do you know, Hunter? Five squared. Five squared. So this is five to the second, or five squared. Does anyone know? why they use the word squared. What does this have to do with squares? Do you know, Grace? Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, so just to recap, uh, multiplication, when you add the same number multiple times, that's fast, is Shortcut is multiplication. When you multiply something a number of times, that's called exponent using exponents. Five times five times five times five. It's just five to the fourth power or raised to the fourth power. Um, the big number is the base. The little guy up there is the exponent. The answer is the power or more specifically, the fourth power of five. Okay. Um, there is a clever way to say the raised to the second power or to the second is five squared because when you make a square out of five, when you square the dimension five, it looks like a square. What about this? Anyone know the clever way to say this? 
Yes, Addy, do you know? Uh, five cubed. Five cubed or five to the third. Um, is You can always say that. Five to the third power or five to the third or five cubed. So when you cube something, when you cube the dimension five, this is what it looks like. Here's my square, but then when you cube it, you add another dimension. This is a five by five by five cube, okay? So when you cube five, that's what it looks like. What's, how do you find the volume of that cube? Do you remember how to find the volume? Were you taught that? Not by me yet. Grace? Length times width times height. Length times width times height of that cube. So five times five times five. What's five times five times five? Kiara? 50. Not 50. No. Addy? Not 15, that's five plus five oh. plus five. Oh, 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 oh. Grady? 125. 125, not 125, but 125. Okay? Um, so remember, when you use exponents, it gets really big really fast, right? Look at this. We have a cute little five and a cute little four. When you put those two numbers together in an exponential expression, you get 600 freaking 25, okay? That's a big number for these two cute little numbers. Have you guys ever heard the term exponential growth? Or it grew exponentially. That means really big, really fast. Okay? So if you lose, if, if, if it decreases exponentially, then you lose really big, really fast. Okay? Yes? I found the easiest way to find the volume. What's that? Click the remote to turn the volume up and see what it yes, says. Yes, you can, you can find the volume of something of just... Fine, so sadly that volume and this volume don't really have anything in common. Right. I wish they did. I want it to. Yes. You know? You just click a button and find out what it says. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so when you find the area of a rectangle, base times height, so the area of a square is still base times height, but base and height are the same thing, okay? Now, what's going backwards? What if you wanted to go backwards? So five squared equals 25. How do you go from 25 that back down to five? What do you do to the 25 to get to a five? What operation do you do? Don't say divide by five. <laughs> okay, what's the opposite operation of squaring something? Sierra? It's not division, that would be divided by five. What's the opposite operation, Hunter? Lination. Lination. Because it's not cubed and it's not squared. It's a line. Triangle. Yeah, that's not going to work. Do you know Kiara? <laughs> Fractions? Subtraction. Subtraction, no. So how do you get from the 25 I can I can use one little symbol that would get me back down to the five. What is that symbol? Grace, do you know? Um the I had it um, um fraction. Not a fraction. Did you I had thought I heard something over here, Grady. Were you whispering? Divide? It's not divide, no. Because you'd have to divide by something. But there's a symbol that I can put on that 25 to make it, to turn it into a five. What can I do to that 25 to get it back down to a five? You're gonna, you're gonna see, this is what you're gonna do. I'm gonna show you and you're gonna say, oh! You can erase the two, You can erase the two, that's right, you could. What operation will get me back down to the five? operation. Send it, what is it? Divide by a negative number? No, not that. Hunter? Add negative 20. No, well that, yeah, it's just one symbol. What's the operation? I feel like it has to be a fraction because if you bring it a reciprocal, a yeah. is Yeah, but you'd have to do that. So opposite of multiplication is division. So it's not division, right? Because that's opposite of multiplication. Opposite of addition is subtraction. Opposite of squaring is finding the Square root. Square root. Square root. Look. 
Square root. You guys remember that symbol? You remember seeing this symbol? Yes. So the square root of 25. So you have to ask yourself, if you didn't know already, what number squared equals 25? Or what number times itself equals 25? Okay, and that was five. Let's see if you can do another one. You ready? What is the square root of 49? Hands are going up. It's Please. crazy. You ready to shout it out? Let's shout it out on three. One, two, three, seven. Because seven. seven times itself wow. is 49. So the answer is seven. Not seven times itself. Not seven squared, but seven. Now, in your mind, I want you to say this. In your mind, not on your paper, the square root of 49 is seven because... 7 times itself is 49. Now, sometimes when you do these square roots, um, it's a trial and error thing, okay? You want to try one that's maybe not so easy? Okay, you ready? What is the square root of 196? That's way harder than I was thinking. <laughs> okay, let's try 10. What's 10 times itself? 100. So we got to go bigger, right? Because we got to get to 196. 14. 14. What's 14 times itself? I'm going to. I have a wild guess. Can I try it? Yeah. 18. Okay, what's 18 times itself? So 18 times 18. Let's see here. So it looks like that's 324. So it's not, so it's got, that's too big. Hunter? 13. Who said 14? Me. Good job, Avery. Dylan? Did you say 14 too, Dylan? No, he's mine. <laughs> okay, so 14 times itself. So see how that's kind of a, you have to guess a number. And you're, oh, I gotta go bigger. Or you guess a number, oh, that's too big. 18's too big, let's go down. But there are some landmarks. You guys remember what 15 times itself is? Do you guys know that one? Well, you all, you are, it's easy. You can go with the tens. You know, 10 times itself, 10 squared is 100. What's 20 times itself? Um, 20 squared. Yeah, what's 20 squared? Oh. <laughs> what's 20 times 20? What's two times two? Four, and then a couple, a couple zeros, so 400. So it's in between 10 and 20, right? Because it's 196, and it's in between 100 and 400, right? So it's in between 10 and 20. So you just have to guess. Let's see, 16, 56, 196. That's it, 14. So the answer is 14. So sometimes you just have to guess a number and then see how it works out. And then you have to adjust from there. That's called trial and error. So you try something, you get an error, then you try something different. Learning from your error. So we had to learn from this 324, this told us that 18 was too big. So let's adjust, let's go down. We also learned from 10, 10 is too small because 10 times itself is 100. So it's gotta be bigger than 10 and less than 18. So see how we're using trial and error to get to our answer. The other thing that will get you an answer really quickly is your memory. So you're gonna be doing this quite a lot. Square root of 49, you've done that before, several times. And, and 49 is on your multiplication chart, where the seven and the seven meet, right? 196 is not on your multiplication chart. Most multi multiplication charts go to 12 or 10. Some go to 15, which is great, but. Um, so this is not a popular number that you remember memorizing. But you will now, now that you're doing squares and square roots, you're gonna be doing this a lot, okay? Um, so, square root of nine, yep, got it, good. Uh, what about this? I'm gonna do two operations, you ready? What is the square root of eight, eight squared? So see how there's two operations in here? 
What is, do you know? If you don't know right away, then you're probably doing it wrong. I know. Anyone want to shout out a guess? Eight. Okay, what was your shout? Eight. Two and a half. Two and a half, okay. So you took the square root of eight, but then it's eight squared. So what's eight squared? Um, eight is, is 36. No, 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 eight is 64. 64. What's the square root of 64? Eight. So what happened here? We just ended up right back where we started. Do you know why? Because these are opposite operations. They cancel each other out, and you're left with eight. So when you square something and square root something, you end up right where you started. So it's kind of like, what's 534 times 11? Divided by 11. 534. Don't do that math. Don't you do that math. Okay, that's a waste of your life. Even though it's math, it's beautiful. But if you multiply by 11 and then divide by 11, you're going to end up right where you started. So don't do that math. Okay, those are opposite operations which cancel each other out. What's 496 plus 12 minus 12? 496. Don't you add that 12. Don't you do it. Okay? Because when you add 12 and subtract 12, the 12s cancel. All right? What's the square root of elephant squared? Elephant. elephant. The square root and the square cancel, then you're just left with elephant. Okay? Yes, Hunter. What if it wasn't a square? What's the square root of elephant? Um, uh, Giraffe. Oh. Um, I don't know if I can agree with that. Because then you're saying a baby elephant times itself equals a full-grown elephant. That's weird. No, two baby elephants added together makes it... No. Okay, talking about this? That would be a question for the biology teacher. Because that, I can't answer that. Okay, um, any other questions on squares and square roots? You guys think you can do these? All right, what's gonna happen a lot is you're gonna accidentally divide by two. Like, what's the square root of 10? It's not five, right? Because you're asking yourself, what times itself equals 10? Well, that's not even a rational number. It's a number, but it's like three point something, right? So that's not gonna work. Um, I'll not, I won't ask you for the square root of 10. Don't you worry about it. I might ask you for the square root of 16. What's the square root of 16? Hunter? I just lost it. Giraffe? I know it's elephant. Baby elephant. <laughs> What's the square root of 16? A four. Four, right? Because four <laughs> times itself, four times four is 16. So trial and error. Now, when I say what's the square root of 16 tomorrow, you're going to say four right away. Because the more of, the, of these that you do, the easier this will be, the faster it will be the more natural it will be. But right now it's kind of a weird concept because you haven't done a lot of them, okay? All right, um, we're gonna talk about other kinds of roots like cube roots and stuff like that later. So basically what times itself three times. Those are a little different and a little more complex, but right now we're just gonna stick with square roots. Can you guys handle this? Yeah. All right, that is 19 and 20. And that's all she wrote. Well done. Bye-bye now. Black math! Give me some math and I'll give you some flack. Black math!